unthought through need to just open my phone and scroll through. Check out what people are saying on Twitter. Check out what people were saying um, on Instagram and Facebook. That was my kind of first thing that I was like, okay, something's a little weird here. Like this is hardwired <laughs> almost into my brain. After your most successful year in Christian music in 2018, you decided to give up social media for a year. On Facebook, you posted, goodbye everybody, see you in 2020. What made you decide to give up uh, all social media? Yeah, man, it's a great question. I think, I think we all feel that, um, that twinge of addiction to social media. <laughs> um, you know, it's it becomes part of who we are, part of uh, our identity, part of, you know, our, our representation to the world, especially for, you know, an artist or a, a personality or a radio, whatever it is. Um, there's this tendency to believe what you put out there rather than who you actually are at home. And for me, the father was putting his finger on that issue and saying, listen, I want you to be an incredible husband. I want you to be an incredible dad. And I actually don't care about your social media image, <laughs> much to my surprise, right? Like, <laughs> um, and he was just kind of highlighting that to me. And, and the whole year, 2019, was about family. It was about being together together. Um, growing as a family, getting healing as a father, um, even for some of the wounds that I grew up with as a kid. So it was almost like it went in tandem with that, like to really love and give my family the attention that they needed. I knew that I needed to just shut all the other doors, you know, shut all the other voices. I don't need to hear people telling me you're so awesome when I know I'm not that awesome at home. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's like when you get mad at your kid for spilling milk, you know something's wrong, right? And the Lord was like, I want you to be at home and I want you to make it count. So that was, honestly, that was the biggest impetus in the whole thing was be present at home. Be present with your family. Be present even in your community, at church, with your friends that you're around. Be present. Don't, um, don't put this other thing first. It just, oftentimes it becomes a distract, distraction if we don't wield it um, with wisdom. I'll say it that way. So that was, that was the biggest thing for me, man, is just shutting off all of the other voices. And I also knew that in giving up everything in 2019, because it was like a full sabbatical year for me, no events, no nothing. And I knew that in giving that up, I would look to social media and see all my buddies, see Torin out doing his incredible tour, see um, Hillsong out, see my Bethel music buddies out uh, and enjoying, you know, like their big events and stuff and wish like, darn it, I wish I was out there. And it's almost like the father was protecting me from that. Um, and he was just like, shut it all down, be at home. So that was it, man. What moment do you remember when you regretted the decision <laughs> to go, when you second guessed yourself? Oh my gosh. I mean, there were definitely times, especially in the first, um, I would say the first quarter of 2019, so January, February, March, where I realized truly like how addicted I was to it and how much a part of my life it was. I had to like put all the restrictions on my phone to where my phone was literally just a phone. You know, it was just, I had text messages, calls. I didn't even have email or like Safari or any of the um, social apps, but I would find myself like opening my phone randomly, you know, at the airport or whatever, and like going to look for Instagram. And I was like, what the heck? Like, what is going on? Like, what is, how, how crazy am I, you know? Um, so it was in those times that you kind of wished that you could go back to it and, you know, go back to the well, so to speak. But it was also in those times that I realized, like, I don't need to be doing this. Like, I need to, I need to focus 
right now on my life, my health, my family, all those kind of things. So it was, it was a weird kind of catch-22. So I've heard addiction mentioned a lot. Even you said it with social media. Uh, what were some of the withdrawal symptoms that you had from withdrawing from social media completely? Yeah. Yeah, like I said, the uh, what felt like the constant, like, unthought through need to just open my phone and scroll through check out what people are saying on twitter check out what people were saying um, on instagram and facebook that was my kind of first thing that i was like okay something's a little weird here like this is hardwired <laughs> almost into my brain um and so i think i think the desire to uh hear people's affirmation maybe like, oh, I love this song. I love this, um, you know, project or whatever I happen to be working on at whatever time. It's like I almost wanted them to corroborate the fact that it was good <laughs> or to af affirm that what I was doing was awesome. And it, it was interesting, like in the void of that, it really did make me run to the father. Shout out to Cody Carnes, uh, Matt Maher and Rand Jackson. It really did make me run to the father and go, what do you think about this? Like, what do you say about the fact that I'm not doing anything right now? <laughs> like, is that good with you? Like, I know other people aren't telling me it's good, um, but what do you think about that? So it, it was kind of a rewiring of sorts, but I've I definitely felt, um, I guess, some of the withdrawals of people's words, uh, good or bad, even. It's, it's almost like I craved people trash talking me. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's weird, man. But uh, I, definitely, I definitely felt that, especially in the first bit. How did your relationship with your close friends uh, change as a result of your decision? Yeah, that, that was actually big. I started to let people in again. Um, I am an isolator by nature. I will just find my own little nook, my own little hole, and do my own thing. And I'm usually good with that because I'm pretty introverted. Um, and what I found was, again, in the void of other people's voices sort of affirming what I was doing, I didn't want to isolate as much. Like, I wanted to be around my friends. I wanted to be around my buddies. I wanted to be around um, even some of my childhood friends and like actually hang and invest in their lives. It felt like before there was no room. I just, I didn't have capacity in my heart for another relationship, even though social media is not a real relationship. You get what I'm saying? Um, but I found myself actually letting people in, actually craving um, real community and real sort of weep with one another, laugh with one another kind of um, togetherness, I guess. Mm. What was the moment with your family that you, look, you looked at everything in 2019, giving up social media, and you said, man, this was worth it? Yeah. I mean, I'm, if I'm honest with you, it, it was a wrestle. Um, I definitely wavered back and forth like, this was an amazing idea. I'm so glad I did it. And then what have I done? You know, like, why would I subject myself to this kind of thing? Um, and it, it really kind of waffled. You know, there were highs and lows for sure. I knew it was right. I knew it was good. But it wasn't really until <clears throat> the end of the year um, I want to say it was beginning of December because it was right before our fourth uh, child, little girl Willow, was born, where I was super wrestling with it. Like, this was the dumbest decision of my life. Look, those were the thoughts that I was having, honestly. And I remember I just said that to my wife, and I was like, babe, like, I'm really struggling. Like, I need to just get before God and see what he says. Like once and for all, I need to know what he says about this season. I know he called us to it, but I, I need that like stamp of approval, like your word over this. And I came actually to this loft that I'm sitting in right now, downtown Kalamazoo. 
And for three days, I didn't bring my phone. I didn't bring a laptop. I didn't bring anything. So I couldn't be reached even by like text message or a call. And my wife was due like in like four days or something oh, like that. No. So I told, yeah, I told my buddy, Caleb, I was like, hey, bro, if she goes into labor, you have to physically drive to the loft, bang on my door and get me to come out. <laughs> I knew, I knew it was right or else I wouldn't have done it. My wife would not have gone for that. <laughs> oh, dude, I couldn't believe Anna went for it, honestly. So I'm here and I've literally, I can't be reached by anything. I didn't bring anything but a few books in my Bible. And the whole first day I was, it was like I was asking so hard. Like I was trying so hard to get an answer. God, like, tell me, was this a good idea or not? And I wasn't getting anything. It was like, it felt like the whole year, like I wasn't getting any answers. Like the breakthrough wasn't happening. The great revelation wasn't coming. And um, I was just, it was like I was trying so hard to get it. And all of a sudden I was reading uh, this book called The Shack, which probably you've read, probably many listeners have read. Um, And it was toward the end of the book and I was like frustrated. So I threw the book down on this couch that's literally right to my right. And I was like, God, like, if you don't speak anything, if you don't tell me this was right, tell me this was good, I'm good with it. I surrender, like I give up, I give it all up. Like if you never speak a word, I'll know that it was you and I'll trust and believe and I'm good with that. And I laid down right here on the couch I opened the book and this portion of the book just like destroyed me. It was right at the end. Sorry, this is a spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't read uh, the book, but right at the end, the main character basically had this this choice, I won't set up the whole thing, to actually come back to earth or like stay in heaven, essentially. Oh, that's the way I'll say it. Um, And he asks the father in the book, he goes, is what I do back on earth worth anything? He goes, all I do is hang out with my family. All I do is hang with my wife. What My work isn't quote unquote that important. Um, my mission on earth isn't that important. Like, is it worth anything to you? And I'm laying there and I read the answer from God in the book. And it just says, um, if anything matters, then everything matters. And basically the idea is if the smallest thing matters, that you smiling at the attendant at 7-Eleven when you go to get your gas and your snack, if that matters, then the biggest stage matters, then the biggest song that reaches the world matters. And in a moment, I mean, I lost it. Like I just wept and wept and there's still like tear stains on this couch. Um, Because what the father was saying is this tiny little thing that no one saw, that no one cared about, that no one even understands matters to me just as immensely and as intensely as you going to the nations and getting a thousand billion people saved. This is just as important to me because you did it in obedience. And I remember just like, oh my gosh, it just, I finally got it and I, I was finally okay with it. And I know that's a really long answer to your question, but there was a lot of waffling and wavering before that moment. Cool. Wow. That's, that's an incredible moment to have with the Lord. Uh, what should I do if I'm addicted to social media? My main word of advice would be fill the void with wisdom because you're going to want to fill it with something. You know, you're, you're all of a sudden giving up something that you normally do fill it wisely. So don't just like go to Netflix and, <laughs> and go to the movies and, and like watch TV 24 seven, actually fill it with God's voice, whatever that looks like to you. That might be reading the Bible. That might be sitting in your quiet time. That might be reading a book that might be uh, walking through the aisles in Walmart shopping, but you're connecting with God. You're actually talking to him the same way that you might to people over Facebook, you know, So fill that void with things that are good. Um, It's like, I I imagine this this story that Jesus tells in the the, uh, gospels and he's like, basically like this guy gets delivered from a demon, right? And it says that 
if he doesn't clean the house that that demon was living in, um, in the time that the demon's gone, it actually says that he comes back <laughs> and brings like seven other demons or something. I can't remember the exact number, but it's like, unless you fill that space with things that are good and things that are right, that stuff comes right back. And it, it comes right back with a vengeance. Um, and I'm not saying that social media is inherently evil. evil. Like, I don't, I don't believe that. By any means, I think it could be used for really good things, but make sure that you're filling the space with things that are, that are noble, things that are pure, things that are um, good and from his heart. Thanks for watching this episode of Can I Ask You Something? We know that as a Christian, you want to understand and love others better, but it can be hard to find biblical answers to the tough questions that get in the way. So in Can I Ask You Something, we listen with love to personal stories and expert opinions so that through their answers and through their wisdom, we can become more compassionate, more loving, and more confident as we follow Jesus. If you have a question or you're in a situation that's really difficult or maybe taboo, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you around.